today we're going to we're going over tactics, chest tactics. First, this is my third class. First class we did pinning, then we do, did double attacks. Now we're going to do a related subject called unguarded men. All these examples are taken from The Game of Chess by Teresh published in America in 1935. But it's, it's a very good book and he has great examples. So let me read to you what he says about unguarded men. Whenever possible, all men should be guarded. The safest guard is by means of pawns. We've all heard that, right? Unguarded men are frequently a source of disadvantage. Sometimes they are attacked while at the same time another threat is developed. Sometimes they facilitate an annoying pin or even a double attack. So it's related to those other two ideas we already went over. A few examples will make the circumstances clear. So all the examples, you'll see unguarded men, and the other side takes advantage of it to win the game. So this is our first example up on the board. It's white to play. And I would ask the audience to tell me which men are unguarded. It's white to win, so let's look at the black side. Right. Now, in addition to that piece, which is the unguarded man, notice that there's a piece, a couple pieces that may not be, they're defended only one time, and that gives us some opportunities also. So, what pawn or piece is only defended once in Black's position? The knight, the knight and then what else? The pawn in front of the bishop. Right. And notice the other tactical element that we're going to take advantage of. Notice how the queen is on a direct line for the bishop. And if only we could get rid of that pawn and get the knight out of the way, we could wipe out the bishop. So those are the ideas. Who sees the winning move for a white? Now, in this case, winning is defined not winning a piece, so don't look for that or a checkmate. We may win a lousy pawn out of a deal. I would just say uh, I would take out the pawn with the knight. That's absolutely the right move. So now we're lined up. We have our queen. The pawn's out of the way. The queen's on the bishop. Now we did have to leave our white squared bishop unprotected, but we can do knight takes knight check, right? He has to do pawn takes knight, and then we can do queen takes bishop. So that would look something like this. And notice in this particular line that the black kingside position is shattered. The g7 pawn is now on f6, and it's conveniently attacked by our black squared bishop and our queen, which would line up the queen and bishop on the line toward the king. That's called a battery in chess and threaten queen to knight seven checkmate. It's all over for black. In that, on top of that, if that's not enough, we could bring one of our rooks to the queen bishop file and threaten rook our queen takes pawn and wipe out the c5 pawn too. But as long as we can get the king, we might as well go <laughs> in that direction. But there was a better move for black in this position. Rather, oh, let me back up a minute. Rather than the queen takes bishop, that was a bad move. What is the relatively better move for black? I would have moved the bishop from the back diagonally. Your queen is attacked. You have to deal with that threat before you move anything else. Knight takes knight. That's the better move. So queen takes knight. Now you see black has avoided those double pawns. His kingside position is intact. He just lost a lousy pawn. 
So now, oh, but there's a, a move for black besides queen takes bishop. There's a better move than that. What is the better move for black? You're going to lose that bishop anyway. Remember telling yourself if you're going to lose a piece, you might as well sell it for what it's worth. So why not sacrifice it? Where can we sacrifice the black squared bishop? Pawn H2. Yeah, bishop takes pawn check. Then we don't actually lose a pawn, do we? And king takes, why king takes or knight takes? Which is better? Well, if the king does it, it's going to bring himself out. That's true. So you might, if you were worried about black attacking the king, you might take with the knight. But black hasn't even moved his rooks. They're hiding behind his pawns, right? And his queen is on the wrong side to attack the king, his queen's going to be on b5, blocked by his own pawn, and his knight's certainly not going to get over. So I would take with the king, because you want your knight to be able to come into the center squares. And if he somehow checks your king, you just go retreat back to g1. Yeah. You can go back and forth. And I don't like having my king boxed in anywhere. But I just, you know. Yeah, but the main thing is that you want to leave your knight where it impacts the center squares and can also go up to G, knight to g5. It's also attacking more squares that way. More. Right, it impacts more squares. And I suppose you could even do a maneuver of rook over to king rook one and bring the king back, and then you could attack along the king rook file if you wanted to. Okay, so now queen takes bishop. Now, um, the pawns are even, right? No? Yeah, three on the king's side and two on the queen's side. But whose pawns are better, blacks or whites? Why is that? Um, they're connected on this side. On the queen's side. Yeah, and it's passed through on the king's side. And blacks not connected or protected, right? So that pawn on c5 looks really weak to me. How can, we, how can white win that pawn? Rook Which rook? Well, you picked the wrong rook. <laughs> you pick the F rook. They're almost equivalent, but the slight difference is you want to leave that A rook there protecting the pawn in case his queen moves to attack the pawn or the knight moves and could attack that pawn that would be undefended. Now, the other rook is blocked in by a pawn too, so why not move the king rook over? That's the right move and the move recommended by the author. Now, notice there's no way black can defend that pawn, and we threaten rook takes pawn, and then what do we threaten? We have a double attack, queen and knight. We threaten to win the knight. This is a, a definite, uh, your pawn up, it's, it's not a winning, necessarily a winning position, but it's a, bit, a pretty good plus for white. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's analyze this position. White to play and win. Now, what, what is the most striking element in the way the pieces are set up for both white and black, would you say? Queens are, are pinnable if the knights are gone. That's right. The queen would be, see, the king is in front of the black queen, and if we could just somehow get those knights out of the way, we might make the king move. We could at least trade queens. Maybe there's some way we can take advantage of that line. Now, where's the unprotected pieces for black? That's our theme tonight, unprotected pieces. Okay. Go ahead, tell me. Yeah, that's unprotected. Uh, but before we focus on pawns, let's see what pieces are unprotected. Yeah, we got lots of them this time, don't we? Okay. Knight on a5. Right. And what else? Bishop, Bishop on e6. 
we have a wealth of unprotected pieces. That makes it a little more complicated to figure out which one to attack. So the answer is, we make a move and attack something, and it makes sense to move one of the knights to open up that line for the queen, and then we would threaten moving the other knight with knight a discovered five. check. Knight well, that would be a check immediately, and the king would retreat, and we wouldn't be able to do a discovered attack on the queen, you see that? The king could just go back to c8 and protect. I would like to do knight to c6, just get a pawn, and then all of a sudden the other knight is protected. Knight to g6 is a good idea. G5, you mean? No, oh, knight to g6, you get the pawn. Yeah. That's true. And then the other knight's protected, not from that king. Let's say we did. Knight takes g6. What is our follow-up threat? What would be the next strong... Say white could do two moves in a row. What would be white's winning move after that? I don't see one. Knight to g6 is a pretty good move, but there's a stronger move. If you have unprotected pawns and pieces, you want to focus on attacking an unprotected piece. Which piece can we attack with one of our knights? You're moving out of the well, look, area, but at least you're picking okay, let's line. look at it this way. Those knights are on black squares, right? They're going to move to a white square. Now, we said there's three pieces that are unprotected. Two of them are on white squares. The knight can't move and attack those two pieces. It can't attack the bishop on e6 or the rook on h7, can it? It has to attack the last piece, the knight. What's the move? That's absolutely correct. Congratulations. It's very important that it's the d6 knight. Why the d6 knight and not the e5 knight? Um, because the king, uh, the king can take the d6 knight. That is not quite it. Notice that one of the knights can move and attack the queen, but only one knight. What knight can move and attack the queen in the future? One from e5. Right, and he can go to two squares to attack the queen. And notice that it would be a, do a discovered check and attacking the queen at the same time, and if the king took the knight, it would leave the queen unprotected. And if the king moves, the knight takes the queen. So the only answer is you have to do the knight on d6 to allow the other knight to attack the queen. So that's why knight, to c, knight on d6 to c4 is the winning move. So this wins. He can't protect the knight, and he doesn't have time to retreat it because our next move, so let's just say he does knight takes knight. Our next move is knight here, discover check. He has to do king takes knight, and we do queen takes queen. Now, he got two knights for the queen, but notice our queen is attacking that pawn on b7. And we have more than an, and we are also threatening the e4 pawn takes the pawn on f5 opening up the bishop line, then the bishop can join in the attack on the king and the knight. And notice that that rook looks pretty yeah. scrumptious over in the corner. Oh, yeah. Queen takes pawn check, king moves, we get queen takes rook. So you're not just getting the queen, you're going to get the queen. We, we get a strong player. attack. That's worth uh, two knights. Yeah. So anyway, that's the end of that one. OK, let's try our next example. This one, in this position, you might be puzzled how it's black to play, black to win, but not to play and win. First, 
the author has white make a blunder. So you won't see anything in this position. Let me make the blunder. He wants to, com <laughs> he wants to complete his development. He castles. Now, what's the unprotected piece? What's a, what could potentially attack the bishop? The rook. What's blocking the rook? The okay, what's the winning move to win a pawn? Why not knight to d5 and take the pawn that you want to win? Oh. If you do knight to f5, I can retreat the queen and protect the bishop. Yeah. If you take the pawn and I retreat the queen, you're still a pawn up. So the answer is, very simply, knight takes pawn, and that's all there is to this example. A cute little way to take advantage of an unprotected piece. Okay, this one is tricky. I've been through these, so that's, I, I've been through all of them, but uh, this is tricky. Let's just talk about, it's black to play and win. Let's talk about, first of all, the king position. Which king looks safer to you, the black king or the white king? The black. The black king, it's hiding, it's well protected by a pawn on h7. The black queen protects it, and the black knight on h5 protects it. That white king should be over there at g2, hiding behind his pawns, or h2 maybe. So the king is stuck in the middle of the board where he's open to attacks. What can, look at the, and now let's talk about the aggressive placement of the relative pieces. Well, let's start with the pawns first. Do they have the same number of pawns? No. No. White has enough. White has two extra, right? Yeah. It, black has five and white has seven. However, notice how white's pawns are far advanced. When pawn, every time a pawn moves forward, they leave open squares behind them and to the side and around them. Notice that the queen knight file is open and that black conveniently has two rooks doubled up. That's a very strong attacking position for two rooks, isn't it? The rook is ready to come down and invade the second row by rook to b2 at an opportune moment. So keep that factor in mind. Notice that the white bishop is what we would say not well placed. It can't move forward, it's blocked by its own pawn on d5. But even worse than that, it blocks the black king. So that bishop on c4 is a problem for white, it's, it's not helpful. Okay, now white's rooks, see how black's rooks are attacking and can invade black's position? White's rook, one is behind a pawn, the other is blocked by the king. The only thing they're doing are defending the first and second rows. So relatively speaking, the black rooks have a big advantage over the white rooks. White is in a purely defensive posture. That's what you want when you're attacking. Black is attacking, he has forced white on the defense. So even though he's two pawns down, black has strong attacking chances. Now we haven't talked about the black knight. If given the opportunity, the black knight is in attacking position too, not just defending the king. What is the black knight attacking? F4. F4, but that is protected by a pawn. What pawn is not protected by any other pawn that the knight can? G3. Okay, so look, we might be able to play knight takes G3 and threaten the rook on H1 at some point, right? Okay. Anyway, these are all the elements to think about as we solve this problem. The queen is protecting the G3. Position. Right now, that's true. So one of the ideas when you're attacking, is there a way to trick the queen to moving away from protecting the pawn on G3, or divert the queen in some other fashion? Moving to F5. Black could do, do, start off with queen f5 check, right? 
That, look, the king can't retreat to C2, which wouldn't be good anyway, because the rook could go to B2 check. So the king would have to go over to E1, E2. But before we jump into this further, let's talk about unprotected pieces with the theme of tonight. What white pieces are unprotected? The rook. Just the rook right now. But this gentleman said queen f5 check, and if our king goes to e2, that now we suddenly have another piece C4. unprotected. Bishop. Bishop on c4. Now we have two unprotected pieces. There might be some combination to take advantage of the, of the fact that those are unprotected and take advantage of the fact that G, the queen is protecting g3 and also defending the center squares. You see that? Now, our, remember, black's queen is now on f5, and the white king is on e2. But before we go into the king retreat, there's an easy one. Well, this is the right move. Queen here, check. So what happens if the queen blocks the check? You check with the queen. And king takes? And then knight takes. Takes four king, the rook. And king taking advantage of the unprotected piece. See, so the queen is overworked here. Wow. You see how the queen is trying to defend, would like to defend against the queen to f5 check, but she has to continue to protect g3, so the queen is overworked. Now that should give you some good follow-ups. This is the main line, king back. What's the winning move for black? You mean one move? Takes a couple moves. Okay. I would say bring the rook down to B1. The queen's protecting it. If he moves his rook over, you got... What if he does rook takes rook? Right. Why bother? Well, you can take it back with either the queen or rook, but I don't see an immediate win. And you solve one of White's problems. He no longer has an unprotected rook on H1, does he? So that... That's not the winning idea. Black knight to g3? Yes, that's the idea. It okay. diverts the queen from protecting wow. those center squares. Four. Yeah, that's good. Queen takes, now what happens? Oh, yeah. then, can, can we attack the rook and bishop with a piece? And the bishop. At the same time? Yeah. And the king? Yep. What's the move? Queen e4. Queen to e4 check. Did you see how we diverted the queen away from protecting the e4 square? And that now we can take advantage of the two unprotected pieces and we win at least an exchange. But the finish is kind of humorous. So let me call up the uh, author's uh, finish because it's rather nice actually. Okay. Wait a minute. Queen here, queen here, okay, queen here. Queen to e3. Queen takes rook. Queen takes rook. Okay, rook. queen takes rook. e6. He wants to open up a line for the queen to check and try to shove that pawn and get, get threaten to get a queen, right? So... That's all he could find. Now we invade with our double rooks. Remember I told you that was a strong attacking. Rook down there. Okay. Now he plays e7. Now he does threaten pawn up ch queen check, but it's too slow. Rook takes rook check. Queen takes. If king takes, what happens? Rook to b2. King to d3. And queen to d1. Checkmate. So, queen takes. Queen to e4 check. Look, we take advantage of that unprotected bishop. It's a, like a reflection move, a repeat move. We bring our queen back and get the same double attack. Now we pick up the bishop. And the queen has been diverted from e3, and pawn up is no longer threatening to win a queen. So that's kind of a nice finish. And if the queen messes up and goes to e3, you check with the rook and lose your queen. 
Good point. <laughs> Very good point. So, anyway, White was butchered fairly well there, yeah. Okay. Oh, this is real simple. It's based on, the author likes to have the opponent make a blunder to start this <laughs> off. So I have to make the blunder, and, and then you'll see. Bishop takes pawn, what's the winning move? Rook to c1. Which rook? Oh, you're doing that to me again. Yeah. <laughs> see if you can guess which rook is the correct <laughs> rook this time. Um, F1? Absolutely correct. Why is that better than the other rook? The uh, other rook is protecting me too. That's true, but there's a better reason. That bishop can move and attack a rook if you leave it on f1, can it? Then it's true we win two pieces, but we could win up, but we lose a rook. So by moving the F rook, there's no bishop to D3 attacking anything. We win a whole piece. <coughs> so that's the, the correct rook. There is no defense. Notice that D2 is covered by our black squared bishop. So that's the end of the story. Oh, black had a perfectly good position until he lined up his bishops and let the rook attack both of them. Okay. So let's move on to the next one. Black to move and blunder. Uh, this is obvious. What's the winning move for white? What are the unprotected pieces? The bishop. And what else? The rook, rook and the, the other rook. That's true. Now. What piece can attack both those unprotected pieces in one move? Queen? Where? Oh. Um. What square does the queen go to? Yeah. You're absolutely right, but yeah. what's the square? It's the A file. A4. A4, that's absolutely right. Notice we attack the bishop and the rook, and one's on a black square, one's on a white square. They can't protect each other, so we want a piece and win. Gee, I'm not sure which one he's going to go for. <laughs> well, if I was black, besides resigning, I'd, I'd protect my rook or move it. But I think I'd resign. <laughs> and get the humiliation over with. Uh, drag it out, make it, make it play hard for the next round. Which it? Uh, Black will take a bishop out, and then the other will take All right. Next one. Let's see if this is based. Oh, this one, this one doesn't lead to a, the, a loss of a piece. It leads to a bad position for white. So it's not as exciting as what we've looked at. And it takes a couple moves to get into it. So first, black plays c3, protecting his d5 pawn and opening a line for his queen, right? Now, uh, white makes a bad move. Rook to e2, very conveniently putting the rook in unprotected status, right? Now, the other piece that's unprotected is the bishop on e4. There's no way to immediately attack him, but we can get ready to attack him with this move. Queen to b6, it threatens the pawn on b2, and the queen can attack the bishop and the rook the next move by queen to a6. So white moves the bishop to protect the pawn. Black attacks the two pieces. In this case, because they're both on white squares, there is a move where one piece bishop can move and protect D1. the other one. Huh? Bishop to D1. Right. Okay, so this is the end, and the positional disadvantage is who would want a bishop on D1 blocked by a rook on E2? And the bishop on D1 blocks the rook on A1. In the meantime, black has his two bishops out, his queens out, and black can bring a rook to the king file and prepare to double rooks 
and initiate a strong attack, then that bishop on e3 can never move once we get double rooks. So uh, black has the much better position, but he's not a pawn or a piece up. Why would white have moved their bishop to e3, considering that the pawn on d4 was already protected? Basically because he wanted a way to protect the pawn on b2. See, the, qu the threat is queen takes b2. Uh -huh. Now, the only, and he can't do rook to b1 because there's a white squared bishop on that square. Yeah. And he didn't, he couldn't block his bishop in with pawn to b3 because then the white could play b5 at some point and trap the bishop. He could try b, b4 though, but, but anyway, that, then the author's example wouldn't work out very well. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why. Okay, I think we got one more. Might as well go through it before we wrap up. Okay. Okay, it's white to move and win. Now, let's look at the uh, position. Um, are the pawns even? Numerically, they are even. Whose pawns are in the more aggressive position, white or black? White. white. Black's clearly in a defensive position, isn't he? Um, black does have a, a well-placed rook on e8, uh, attacking that pawn on e4. Of course, the pawn's protected by the bishop, so there's no threat by black to win the pawn. And the white rook on f1 can slide over to e1 if need be and reinforce the pawn. So clearly white is in the attacking position. Black's pawn structure doesn't look that bad other than being purely defensive. Notice that the pawns are only on the second and third row of black's position. That's a defensive setup. White's pawns are all the way to the fourth row. That's an aggressive setup. He's attacking squares in black side of the board with his pawns. And he keeps all the black pieces out of the center of the board. Now, furthermore, black has a pawn weakness. What's the pawn weakness that black has? C6. Okay, those two pawns in front of each other, what are they called? One, one pawn at C6, one at C7. What are they called in chess? A wall? Looks like a double pawn. Okay. Remember, double pawns are weak. If that pawn on C6 was back on B7, black could play the pawn on C7 up one square to C6, and the pawn on B7 would protect. The, he'd have a nice pawn chain, and it would block the white squared bishop. You see that? But by, because of that pawn's on C6 and double, no pawn can protect that pawn on C6. That pawn is a weakness. We're going to figure out a way to attack that pawn. Now, the logical piece to attack the pawn is the bishop sitting on g2. What's in the way of the bishop attacking the pawn? E4. Yeah, so let's just throw that up one square, and we sacrifice the pawn, but we threaten bishop takes pawn, and once we get our bishop to c6, what's our threat? You're pinning the knight. I'm pinning the knight, and I threaten bishop takes knight, right? And notice that the rook on d1, along with the pawn on e5, is attacking the pawn on d6, threatens to win the pawn. Pawn takes pawn takes, rook takes pawn. Then I'd have a rook and a bishop on that knight, wouldn't I? That looks like elements of a combination. I might not win the piece. Maybe I can win a pawn out of, for my troubles. So, we already said e5, which is the right move. Now, what do you think black should do here? Move uh, mm. the f6 pawn. Where? To take out the... e5? Okay, that's, that's the main line. So, we'll go to that in a second. There's an alternative defense black can try. If your pawn is attacked, now white's threatening to win two pawns. You could try to block the bishop 
with a pawn move, at the same time you would remove the pawn on d6 from being attacked. What move is that? Moving the black pawn. D5. D5. Right here. Now it looks like black's safe. He's got a pawn chain directed at the bishop. It looks like there's nothing for the bishop to do now. And he saved the pawn. It's no longer on d6. There's no threat. And black is threatening pawn takes pawn. Pawn takes pawn. In right? Yeah. In only works if the black pawn were on d7 where the knight is and you move it two squares. Oh, that's only there? Yeah. Okay. It, the pawn is on the fifth like the white pawn, but it, in passant is French for in passing. And it means that if the pawn moves two squares, white gets to treat the pawn as if it had only moved one and he can take it then. Okay. But because the pawn's already on d6, yeah. it doesn't apply in that case. Okay. But there's a drawback to d5. How can we attack that pawn with another piece or pawn? The pawn on d5 now. The double move from the c, the c4. Right. So let's shove that up there. Now look, there's pawn takes pawn, pawn rook takes pawn, or bishop takes pawn check. King over, then we can still pin the knight, and we'd open up the line of the rook, and we'd have the bishop on that knight. There's no way to defend it. D5 doesn't work because C4 is such a good move that you found. Okay, so now we go to the main line. F takes. What's the next move for white? Bishop takes pawn. Yeah, bishop takes pawn. Now, what does black do? Yeah, she moved the rook to protect the knight. And where should he move it? Which rook? Well, you would move the rook that the knight is pinned against. So you would move the rook on e8. It wouldn't make sense to move the other rook. Because then you pin it. I could pin it. I could drop the bishop back to d and pin it against the king. And then I would win a bishop for I, a rook for a bishop. So. It has to be either rook to e7 or rook to d8, right? Does it make a difference where the rook, which square the rook moves to? Yes. I think that if you move to e7, it would, you know, you're increasing your, your play on the field with the rook. I agree with you. But I will say that in this particular example, it doesn't make a difference. And the reason is white takes the knight. So the but rook if I didn't. The, the, would, yeah. Right. Then you would be right. So he takes, and the rook ends up on d7 anyway. So in this example, it worked to either square would end up in the same. Now notice that the pawn on d6 is pinned, is it not? So you take the pawn. So we take the pawn. It looks like we win a pawn. But black has a defense. Rook takes check. Now if I do rook takes, he does pawn takes pawn, and he's defended, he has three pawns and on the queen side, well, he has three pawns, five pawns, and white has five pawns. So we take with the king, because I want the rook is stronger on queen one than on f1. So I take with the king, he checks, you with he the checks me to get out of the pin, now I get my, see, I get my king up to a good safe square, king to g2. Notice how it protects all the entry points on the f file. It protects f3, f2, and f1. White's king is better placed than black's, which is stuck back on g8, behind the pawns and the rook. You see that? Okay, now black gets his pawn, but watch what happens. This is really cool. You check with the rook. Check. The rook blocks. Rook. Now what? Then you come up with a square and win that pawn. Right here to d7? Right. That doesn't work because... Oh, then you just got to go back and He forth. just goes back. Yeah. He just moves back to f7. Yeah, yeah. All right. So the right move is to go to a king and pawn ending. It's a one king and pawn ending. So you take the rook. Now look. Whose pawns are weaker, white or blacks? Black. Black has three isolated pawns, doesn't he? 
White pawns are all protected on both the king and queen side. That's enough for white to win the envy. It's kind of nice, so we'll run through it real quick. Also, the king is closer to the pawns by one move. You see that? Okay, now he could go to, the white, black king could go to e6 or d6. The author has him go to d6 so he can protect the pawn on c7. So he goes there. Now, there's only one move for white to win the king and pawn ending. Who sees the winning move? It's tricky. Pawn on c2 to go forward two spaces. That's what you would think, but that's not the right answer. The problem with pawn to c4, notice that the black pawn could move to c5 and block our b pawn from moving to b4. And then the white, the black pawn on a7 can move to a5. And even if I play a3, I can't move the pawn to b4. That would be a drawn king and pawn ending. The clever move which I, I admit I might not have seen this if I hadn't read the answer, is b4. Now, he can't play c5, because it would be pawn takes pawn, king, king takes king pawn, and then I have an extra pawn, and I can shove the pawn up, the king, black king retreats, then at some point I can shoot my king over to e6, f7, and wipe out the kingside pawns, he doesn't have time to get my rook pawn, and I shove one of my pawns and get a queen and win the ending. So c5 doesn't work, so he plays a6 to prevent the pawn from moving forward. Now I play a4. I'm getting ready to shove my pawn to c4, and then I can get a pass pawn on the queen side. Black's king's going to have to go over there to stop the pass pawn. I take the king pawn and I move my king and wipe out his two pawns on the king's side. So there, yeah. Now, what else could he do? If he plays c5, I put my pawn to b5 and I have two pawns against, I have a passed pawn right away, you see that? Because the pawn can go to b6 and b7. So c5 doesn't work because I moved my pawn to b5. If he moves one of the king side pawns, well, the, the g6 pawn won't work because I could go king to f5 and attack the pawns. Similarly, moving the h pawn doesn't really help. If he moves to h5, I can move my pawn to h4, and then I... Uh, he has to move his king somewhere, and I can get my passed pawn on the queen side, and then I can still walk over and get the king side pawns. You're getting him a judge one. Yeah. So anyway, he played a5, and here's how it goes. King takes pawn. Oh, and this is where it stops, because obviously, look, he can't even do king takes c4, right? Because he would leave the a5 pawn to go to a6. And notice that the king can't block the a6 pawn because he can't retreat to b6. So he can retreat to c6, but then he's not threatening any pawns, and I just move my king over to f6 and wipe out the two pawns on the king's side. And that covers our topic of unprotected pieces. So the moral of the story is always try to protect your pieces, preferably with pawns. If not with pawns, with other pieces. And if you have to leave one hanging around, make sure there aren't any combinations against it.